impressive part she played. I thought she was a pretty girl, and I wondered about it. And I, I've told people, pray for people you see on television. I do it. Man, I mean, I'm praying for everybody. If you see somebody say, I don't like the way they live, I don't like what they do, pray for them. Really pray for them. If you don't like what they do in life, pray for them. Where do we get permission as Christians to decide we've written somebody off and we won't pray for them? Well, I prayed for this young lady. Her name is Lisa Welchers. She played on the Facts of Life. Would you welcome Lisa to life today? She's here with us. Lisa, good to see you. Thank you. Glad you're here. How's the family? Oh, family's great. Getting big. Growing up. Growing up. How old are your children? Eight, nine, and ten. My goodness, my boy. <laughs> boy, I tell you what, I mean, you, you guys were close, you and your husband there. <laughs> That's I, I, um... <laughs> we still are, okay? It's no we're indication just because okay. there's, a, you know, an eight-year span You're here. You're still close. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How's your pastor? Pastor Jack Hayford is doing great. He's a... Uh, we see him just on Communion Sunday now because he's handed off the senior pastorship uh, to his son-in-law, Scott Bauer, and we enjoy him too, but it's good to have Pastor Jack uh, back home for Communion Sundays. Well, he and I are great friends and great supporters of Life Outreach. We appreciate that, Jack. I hope you're being careful and taking care of yourself. But he's a great, I believe, apostle in the world today. I really do believe that. The church on the way in Van Nuys, California is where you go. When did you start going there? Did you go while you were doing Facts of Life, by the way? Uh, yes, I did. I started going there when my mom um, was going to move to California, and she has a son, and so uh, they have a really good youth program there. So I started going there, and uh, that's where I met my husband, who's an associate pastor there. Well, and that was a life-changing experience, that's for sure. Not right away. <laughs> we were just friends for a couple of years. Oh, okay. We were actually in Stormy O'Mardian's prayer group together. Is that right? And I would pray uh, every, every month that the Lord would help me find a husband, and my husband, Steve, was very diligent to pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all connected. Yeah. Now, you left the acting, which did you really enjoy it? I mean, or was it oh, just something loved you it. just so kind much of, fun? You, you, you I had know, a great experience. You got out of it because you were fed up with oh, it. Oh no, I had a great experience. I know that a lot of uh, child stars don't have a good experience, but I did. God was gracious and protected right, me. Why did you stop? I stopped because I was pregnant three years in a row, and they <laughs> <laughs> I, they they didn't hire me because I was always in the OBGYN office. So. <laughs> You'd have had to be the girl and the family was always in trouble, right? That's right. That's right. And see, I would compromise my belief, so therefore that ruled that out. That ruled that out. Well, so you're, you're busy being a mom. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, That's pretty you know what? Once I, did, once I finally got back into fighting shape, I had these three adorable toddlers at home, and I just... I just couldn't stand to leave them. And so my husband was so gracious and just said, well, that's okay, Lisa. You stay at home. We, we, we downsized. We started renting a home so we could live on his salary. Well, you were and married to a preacher. You didn't have to worry about money anymore. That's oh. for sure. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the church on the way has blessed us very much. Thank you, Pastor Jack. We're just fine. <laughs> but you stopped really and truly. I mean, you, like you said, you could have gone back. And a preacher certainly doesn't make the kind of money that an entertainer or an actress makes. So it was a call, right, from oh, God definitely. to the children. Absolutely. And you know what? Like so many things, there are some things which, that we just obey God's call. But I found that mostly in life, uh, God's call really is the desires of our heart anyway, and it wasn't a tough decision to stay home. So I love it. you never have regretted it. Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, you know what's been really hard? Um, I've homeschooled the kids all through the grade school, and I had, I had to put them into a, a private Christian school this year to write my second bo book and promote this one. And that was, an act, that was an act of obedience. That was very much for all of us, just saying, Lord, um, we're going to give you this year because you've asked for it and you've given us a message to help other people. But I've even said to the kids, you know, you're making a sacrifice too. We are making a sacrifice on behalf of the kingdom of God. And that's been, that's been more of the obedience is going back to work. They weren't excited about going to public school? No. Or to, to Christian no, school? No, well, I have one daughter that was. She's excited about it. Mm -hmm. But is the other the two want to come home. No, she's the middle one. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the other two are wearing her down. So you got to go out and get mixed That's a little. That's right. Now, you referred to a book, and I haven't held it up yet, but it's mm -hmm. called uh, Creative Correction, Extraordinary Ideas for Everyday Discipline. And Focus on the Family is featuring the book. And uh, I guess uh, the publisher is Tyndall. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the connection with Focus on the Family, I'm curious about that. I know they appreciate what you stand for. What is the connection? Are they utilizing They actually it? published the book. They actually did publish yes, it. Yes, and they don't do a lot of publishing mm -hmm. of books these days, um, but because it was a parenting book and they wanted it to be the parenting book that they published this year, and so they put, it's called The Brand, they put on top of it, even though Tendale House is the one that 
distributes it. All right. Could you explain the title? Creative, creative Correction. Creation. Well, Creative Correction is because um, I have raised my children in a real traditional setting and tr raised them in, in the church, um, and I'm very thankful for that. But um, there, came, there came a point where those, those ways weren't working anymore. Uh, they weren't working because the kids were getting a little older, and also my, oh, my son was diagnosed with ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So a lot of just the traditional child-rearing methods weren't working. And, uh, and so uh, spankings were wonderful when, they was, when he was little, and I was thankful for the gift of a loving, administered spanking. But really, it came to a point where it, it was a fight, and he would just, you know, fight back and, you know, go kicking toys down the room and slam the door and scream and holler, and it just, we rolled, we just kind of kept rising until I realized, you know what? Uh, maybe this maybe this isn't the only way to correct your child and so I, I went to the Lord and he was very gracious to just help to help me to realize first of all I shouldn't even start a discipline with him when we're both like this mm -hmm. let him calm down and then come up with some creative way whether it's an incentive program whether it's uh, something to motivate him whether it's a story that helps him understand why I'm expecting him to do something you know it's not just because I'm the mom and I say so Maybe I need to bring the scripture into it. And one of the practical, uh, the toolbox sections is all the different things that we've come across as parents and the scripture that addresses it. You know, God wrote the Bible for his children. So, I mean, he, there's things in there for whining. There's things in there for sibling conflict. There's, there's scriptures for anger, attitude, all kinds of things that we can say, this is what God says about it. I'm not just saying this because I'm a mean mom. God created the world, He makes life work, and He says this is what makes life work. And it really helped me to be, to be able to bring Him into it and help Him to make the choices for the right reasons. Well, and create, the word creative has a positive aspect to it anyway, because when you're creative, it does take time. There's a calm down time, because let's face it, we do get angry. Right. Sometimes we get frustrated. And I send to, it when and, it, But to be creative, you have to be calmed down and mm -hmm. take time to think and let God talk to you. And look at that child as an individual that has different needs than maybe the other child. Exactly. And, you know, I, I recommend sending a child to a pre-designated uh, place so that they can calm down, so that you can calm mm -hmm. down. So if you're in the middle of something, you know, so many times as parents we're in the middle of something and we don't want to deal with something, mm -hmm. so we just yell at them or tell them to get out of there or just, you know, mm -hmm. just work it out yourself. But if we send them someplace, then at least it begins the correction. We can finish whatever we're doing or calm down or send a quick prayer up, Lord, what should I do? Or, and I don't mean this to be a plug, I mean, I mean it mm -hmm. honestly, reach for my book, look in the topical index, look up what you're dealing with. Oh, he just told a lie. What should I do about that? And it'll send you to four or five different ideas to deal with lying. And well, I think that's good because you hear so many mothers and, parents and dads saying, what do we do with this particular situation? I liked, uh, I think it's in your book too, since you did homeschooling with them, the different ways you did of correcting there, like maybe taking their weaker subject yes. and making them spend extra time in yeah. that weaker subject. Well, that's been real effective. I like any kind of correction that not only addresses the negative behavior, and it has to hurt a little or it's not effective, but I also like it if there's some kind of positive thing that can because come out can of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, for instance, my, my uh, daughter, who is just drops things on the floor wherever, I mean, the clothes fall off, that's where they end, you know, land up. <laughs> the candy wrappers, that's where they're going to go. The towels, they're on the, they're on the floor of the bathroom. Anytime I trip, trip over one, she has she, to do she's a... She's acting like most women's husbands, no. probably. <laughs> well, then maybe this will work for your husband. <laughs> if he's having trouble with his multiplication tables, uh, <laughs> I send her, I say, okay, that's 100 math facts. Go do your threes. And I have some sheets of paper. She, you know, she learned her math facts in, you know, in a summer. <laughs> <laughs> How about and picking things up stuff? Are a little bit things stuff? are a little bit cleaner. She's doing better at that. She is. Uh, another idea I have for just picking up things is I'll say to my son sometimes if he leaves things out, that's okay, honey. If I see you didn't put that up, clean that mess up. I'll clean it up for you. And then I put it away, but I hide it. And so he learns pretty soon that it's actually, like it's that. a lot quicker to actually put it up where it belongs than to go find it where mama's hidden it. And, and also, I think it's, it, I've, I've noticed too, it's better to go into their time span because they, if they are going to have some kind of correction, they want it done quick so they can get back to their fun. Yeah, that's, that's true too. Yeah, that's not the kind of hide and seek that kid had in mind. <laughs> Hide them where I'll never find them. That's great, though. I can see the the creative. You know, the creator knows these ideas. I was thinking earlier about spare the rod, spoil the child, and I think that we so often interpret the rod to merely mean the the switch or the you know the the measure 
uh, of correction that would be spanking or paddling. And, 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 and I think in love and, and when you're calm, uh, that can be appropriate at, at certain times of a child's life. But I think it would also be appropriate to understand the rod is simply meaning spare correction. If you don't have correction in the child's life, you, can, you will lead that child to ruin. They need the correction. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific type. But you pointed something out that I think is very important for people to understand. You said there does have to be some pain associated with it. Not necessarily, you know, a swat. But it, this is something that bothers me. It pains me. And the reason that's true, you might ask, why is that true? Why would somebody need to hurt in some way? Because sin hurts. Mm -hmm. Rebellion hurts. Disregard of the truth of God and the absolutes of life hurt as much as throwing yourself off the top of the roof and the law of gravity brings you down to the painful consequences. The consequences of your actions that are contrary to the word of God hurt, right? So in correction, you show them that these actions that go against the boundaries of protection, which is what they are, will bring pain. And I think you made a very important point. It didn't necessarily mean physical in the sense of striking, but I will deprive you or I will cause you to have the discipline of having to do something that requires the pain of endurance, running, endurance, all these things. Great point. Also, um, you mentioned about the umbrella of uh, just the umbrella of protection is one of the things I try to teach our children is when they obey us that they're under the umbrella of protection. When they disobey us, then they're open to whatever hell wants to rain down on them, you know, just in life. And um, you're talking about pain. Sometimes uh, it's a logical consequence, um, and sometimes I orchestrate logical consequences. If, you know, if they leave their bike out, it could have gotten run over. Well, it didn't, but that's just because you're lucky. I'm still going to take it away from you for two weeks because it could have gotten run over <laughs> and you wouldn't have had it for, forever. But one day I came home. My son had just gotten his braces off one week earlier. I came home, and his, top, his front tooth was cut in half. He was holding it, the ice to it. That his daddy was holding him. He was holding the ice there, bleeding. And I was about to take him to the dentist. And he said, Mama, I know this is going to cost you a lot of money to get my tooth fixed. But whatever it costs, it will be worth it because I learned why it's so important to obey. Daddy told me not to be slam dunking, and I did. And I fell, and I, mm -hmm. and I hurt myself. And I know mm -hmm. why now you tell mm -hmm. me to stay under the umbrella of protection. So you know what? Mm -hmm. The pain was worth it. Sure, yeah. that's a great lesson. May I ask you this? Uh, one of the things that I uh, believe as a parent as I look back and as I work with our staff or with just people I'm trying to help to, to learn something, I try to give them more than orders or instructions. I try to give them understanding. I think sometimes a child at certain ages can only follow the orders. We'll do it because mommy said. But even in passing a moment ago, you said you try to help them understand there is, in my opinion, a need to try to teach them to understand. It, yes. Is that what you feel? Absolutely. You know, I, and as you mentioned, in the earlier uh, foundational years, I think it is important that they obey without arguing, without question, because they need to learn a healthy fear of their parents and respect. But you know what? If you just stay with that, then as soon as you, they get out of your, your sight, they're going to choose what they want if they don't have real reasons that make sense to them. And so um, a after each chapter, there's a toolbox to help give you practical ideas to, to uh, follow through on what that particular chapter was. And on this one, which is the heart of obedience, um, I have all kinds of stories because I found that we can correct them from the outside in. But, but they also need something to motivate them from the inside out. And stories oftentimes stick with them. I mean, even as simple as Peter and the wolf. You know, I mean, not Peter and the wolf, yeah, the, the boy who cried wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that helps. You tell that story. Mm -hmm. It helps a child understand why, if you lie and you continually lie, that you can't be trusted and people won't believe you next time. That's a real simple story. But it really does, it's better, it's, it's uh, effective so you're not just saying, well, don't lie because I didn't say so and we're not going to have a liar in this house and, you know, mm -hmm. give them correction. My mother told me that story. That's a powerful story. You cry out for help and you're just kidding and you really didn't need it. You're crying wolf. But then one day the wolf is there and you cry and no one comes. I never forgot that. No. I think I must have been maybe four or five years old when I heard it. And uh, I just didn't cry wolf unless there was one around. <laughs> I remembered it, mm -hmm. you know. I, I really appreciate uh, the book, Creative 
correction. It's in the bookstores, Focus on the Family. I'm sure you could call them and get it to from them. Uh, but go get it. Uh, it'll help uh, Lisa get uh, back to homeschooling, too. <laughs> and uh, because I know she's married to a preacher, buy the book. <laughs> you listen to me, buy the book. And that bicycle might get run over sometime accidentally to get another one. I really appreciate you, Lisa. I appreciate the spirit that, that, that I see in you. How important is it for you and your husband to be agreeing in the emphasis and, and focus that you take in correction? Uh, obviously, it's, it's very important. Um, and again, though, I see that that's a luxury. I, I, our lives, yours and Betty's lives, they're luxuries. They're because God has just poured out blessing on us because he does say, he does say when you obey, there is blessing. And that's something I try to teach my children too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I set up, uh, there's a whole chapter on rewards and, and, and motivations because you know what? I say if God's not above bribing his kids, then I'm not either. You know, <laughs> he sets that up for us too. Mm -hmm. And so I know that we have a, a it's a luxury that we have a wonderful marriage and that my husband is, uh, is in agreement with me. So it is important. But I also believe that um, even one parent, even one parent that's consistent, um, it, it, can, it can make a difference. Even one parent that's praying can, mm -hmm. can make a huge difference. However, if there are two of you, it's good for you not to allow the children to pit one parent against the other because they will try, won't they? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think uh, children, you have to model respect too. Um, you know, I. I will not, in front of the children, go against my, what my husband says. Um, why? Because then am I going to turn around and then get onto them for going against what I say? I'm their authority and I'm their covering. Well, he's my covering and I need to relate to him and be very conscious of the way I relate to him because that's what I'm expecting my children the way that they relate to me. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. You realize that's how powerful what she just said is. This is absolutely wonderful. I, I think it's thrilling that a... Um, a Hollywood actress, uh, a sitcom star would say, hey, uh, I'm going to really get it together. I'm going to, to be uh, the mom I ought to be, the wife I ought to be, and that's more important than anything in the world. And God really has given her a lot of wisdom. So I hope you'll get the book either through Focus on the Family or go to the bookstores and get it. If you've got children or grandchildren, I can tell you right now, I want one of the books for each one of our children because they have four children, four children, and three children. <laughs> and they need a lot of creative ideas. And you know what, that's they're funny. They're great that, kids, that, but they need it. You, you know. know what I'm finding, and it's very funny, I'm finding a lot of people buying, grandparents buying it for their adult children. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't the case with you, but a lot of adult uh, parents of adult children don't feel they can speak into their life. They don't have that mm -hmm. place. That's and right. this is a real easy way to say, oh, you know that girl we used to watch on TV? Well, she's written a book about parenting. And it, the Lord's exactly. really using it kind of as an evangelism tool. In, in that, they all watched you. All our kids watched you. And so that is, a, that, and we don't have a problem communicating with our children at all. We have no problem doing that. And, and they invite our uh, creative suggestions, <laughs> uh, which we're just full of them. And, uh, <laughs> but listen, these kids are great, and they all have powerful personalities. And uh, they're, you know, uh, they can be pretty tough. They're all traced back to old grandpa in some areas. <laughs> and they need the right kind of correction, and this book will do it, so go get it, all right? 